guys, no egos, amazing passion, came prepared. I would work with any of them. It's, I'm so impressed. Um, we're going to um, do a live performance for you now. Uh, so we worked a lot on film and television. Now we're going to work a little bit on theater. So <laughs> uh, they're all going to speak up so you can hear them and still find the grounded truth and the emotion. So without any further ado. Uh, That's no. No asshole. I mean of dying. Hey, you remember our rule. Forget rules. Yeah? That goes for all of them then. Fine. Are you scared? No, not really. I mean, I'm kind of upset, you know, I'm not leaving anything behind. I've got no legacy, no wife, no kids, no body of work. That's not true. What about this? What about all these cameras you paid to document you? Your family will watch this and they'll know you were loved. They'll know you were happy and at peace. Am I? You see me, at least right now. Yeah, I guess I am. And that thing about not leaving behind a wife, that's not true either. That is... If you'll marry me. <laughs> um, I saw it on your bucket list. Get married. Your sister showed me. Look, I was joking. You don't have to do this. Are you sure you were joking? Actually, no. I wasn't. Is it the ring? <laughs> <laughs> I knew I should have tried harder to get the one with the dolphin at night. I could go back to the gas station. <laughs> Look, this is all very sweet of you, but I don't want to dream or ruin your dream wedding by having a quick one done, you know, in the Elvis Chapel in Vegas. And who says the Elvis Chapel isn't my dream wedding? <laughs> Look, throw out the fact that I'm paying you. Do you even like me? You, you can be honest. Yes. If you haven't noticed by now, then obviously there's something else wrong with you besides that tumor. Are you sure you want to do this? Then let's do this the right way. Mm -hmm. Carly Shakira Aguilera. Carly Sarah Stoops. <laughs> <laughs> You never told me that. You never asked. <laughs> well, I'm sure I'd be glad to get rid of the last name Stoops for a, a little while. Just ask me, asshole. Carly Sarah Stoops, will you marry me? No more rules, right? No more rules. Come here. <laughs> out here. I don't know if I believe in God, but the ocean, it's always there for you. Infinitely larger than you are, yet completely indifferent. So, my version of God. Frank, what did it feel like to cut your wrists? You know, 
I wish I could tell you that I felt bad, but I didn't. I was outside of the world, you know? It was very peaceful. But I'm feeling that way now, though, too. So, you know, sometimes I just wish I could sleep until I was 18, skip high school and everything, just skip all of it. You ever hear of Martin Proust? He's that guy you admire? Yeah. French writer, total loser. <laughs> Never had a real job in his life. Unrequited love affairs, gay. Spent 20 years writing a book almost no one reads. But he was also probably the best writer since Shakespeare. Anyways, he gets down to the end of his life, and he decides that the best years of his life were the years that he suffered because they forced him to think and grow and feel very deeply. They made him who he was. And the years that he was happy, total waste. <laughs> Didn't learn anything. So if you sleep until you're 18, think of all the suffering you'll miss. High school is your prime suffering years. <laughs> you don't get better suffering than that. Unless you go into academia, but that's a whole another story. You know what? Fuck beauty contests. It's like life is just one fucking beauty contest after another. High school, then college, then work. Fuck it. Fuck the Naval Academy. And fuck the MacArthur Foundation. If I want to fly, I will find a way to fly. You gotta love what you do. And fuck the rest! <laughs> I'm glad to hear you talking again, Frank. <laughs> You're not nearly as stupid as you look. <laughs> so, now what do we do? You got me, Frank. Maybe... Maybe we could just stay out here forever, huh? We should go. That's a good idea, Dwayne. Now give me your wallet! All of it? What? Yes! All of it! <laughs> Wait, is this foreign currency? Why? Why do you have foreign currency? Well, you have some leftover after you travel, and you mean to exchange it, but you never do. <sighs> wow. I don't do as much international travel as you might think. I guess that's because my money's wrapped up in, well, I don't know. Usable money? Sure. <sighs> hey! Is this a gift card? Yeah, <laughs> from my and Beyond. Eh, pass. What? Are you sure? You don't need anything from there? They have everything. <laughs> Do they have pasta strainers? Your mind's gonna be blown when you see this selection of- Okay, I'll take it! I mean, I would also take these 20% off coupons, but they seem expired. Wait, they'll still honor it! Really? Wow, that is <laughs> really good customer service! Hmm. Whoa! Why do you have a card for Circuit City? Those things shut down years ago. They did? Yeah, I'm really doing you a serious favor here. Your wallet was in serious need of a cleaning. Wait. Oh my. Wow. This thing 
here too? What is this? What this? This doesn't look important, eh? What? Oh, hey! You're the second person this week that I found with one of these funny little gym card things. Oh yeah, that's from my built-in fitness center. Oh, then maybe you know this guy. Um, <clears throat> it's kind of wiry, curly hair, glasses. Reddish, red horn ring glasses. That's the guy! <laughs> that's that was my favorite job. Oh, cool. I say, it's a big world, it's a small world, but big city. You know what we should do? We should, we should grab a slice together. If you're buying. I'll use your Amazon card. <laughs> Great, I'll get the points. Unless you need to get to Circus City. Ha ha ha, very funny. <laughs> I love a good cry. May I? The kind of cry that makes you feel like you've been swimming in a river and you just come up for air. The kind of cry that takes you back to the reason why you were crying in the first place. Why are you crying? Those boys said you can't play basketball because you're a girl. Did they see you cry? Good. Boys think crying is weak, but it's just because most of them can't do it. You want to play basketball with them? You need to know one very important thing. That you're a little black girl. Well, if you knew that, you wouldn't be sitting on this bench crying. You need to go out there. You need to be better, faster, smarter. So when your opportunity comes, you see it and you take it. Don't worry about getting anyone's approval because they won't believe you can do it anyway. You'll be a little black girl from this neighborhood. Don't worry about being liked. You'll get love. You'll always get love. Unless you fall asleep thinking of all the files of black women who were victims just because they were black and a woman. I think about all of the black men who were in jail and are innocent. I wake up in the mornings and think about all of the little missing black children. You wanna go play basketball? Then you get up and you go play. You got any money? I'm trying to buy a bus ticket home. No, I, I don't. You got any change at least? I'm sorry, I don't have any money for you. What's wrong? Are you afraid? Of you? No. Yes, you are. Look, here's $20, okay? Just let me take your picture. I'm building my portfolio for photography school. Wow. You're afraid to touch me. I'm not afraid to touch you. I just had no reason to touch you. Don't photographers want to make yourself just comfortable? You didn't even want to touch my cup. But it's okay. I'm dirty and ugly. Maybe I don't want you to take a photo of me. Then I won't. You're buying a bus ticket in the train station? 
Trains don't take me where I want to go. That sounds poetic. Buses are cheaper. That's all. Right. Good to know. What is? What do you think you know? That you're not lying. I see people with these signs and saying that they need money to get home and I think that they're probably lying. Why? Do a lot of people lie to you? Not the people who care about me. Do you ever want to... Really go home? Never. Why not? It's not an option for me. Of course it is. It isn't. Okay? Maybe things have changed since you've been gone. I doubt it. You don't even know why I left. It's not fair for you to just give up on people. To just disappear. No one cares. I had no choice. Everybody has a choice. You had a choice. Believe me, I did it. My sister thought she didn't have a choice either. She was only 12 years old when she killed herself. She thought I abandoned her. But I wish she would have known how much I wanted to save her. How much I loved her. That's a lot of talk. You're just like my sister. But I bet if your sister had come back, I bet, but I bet if your sister had come back for you, you wouldn't have gone with her. I wanted to, and I couldn't. You asked perfect strangers for help all day long, but you couldn't even ask your own sister? You know what? Here's your 20 bucks back. He's gone. is gone. Uncle Bob is... Who are you? Do yourself a favor, Karen. How do you know my name? Call your mother. Submarine, actually, for a pretty long time. Oh my god, that's so sexy! I bet you have tons of amazing stories to tell. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, did, did you did you want to hear one? Yes. Oh my god, of course. There sure are a lot of them. Mm -hmm. I, I just. Just gotta think of one. Uh, oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Is it too hard for you to think because of my super sexy outfit? Yeah, that dress, it kind of looks like you're wearing a napkin. From a, a really fancy Indian restaurant. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop being sexy for a second. Just for a second. Real talk. Julia gave me this outfit. Really? Same here. <laughs> I've never felt so uncomfortable in my life. <laughs> same, same here. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess Julia also told you what tonight is about. The nail and bail. The, the nail and what now? The nail and bail. <laughs> We're gonna sleep together. Uh, oh God. What do you mean? <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Eat your food. <laughs> is that not what you want to do? Uh, of course I want to do that. I mean, like, damn. <laughs> when, when you just present yourself like that and and just look at me, I'm I'm sweating and and, and my stomach. And she told you to eat your food. Look, 
it, it's like when you're on a plane and the stewardess comes up to you and is like, hey, just so you know, 15 minutes before we land, the captain's going to get sick and you're going to have to land the plane. I don't want to get told that at the beginning of a flight. <laughs> Let me eat my meal, watch a movie maybe, marvel at some Sky Mall. Now i got to spend the entire flight thinking, can I land this plane? How is this plane different from other planes I've landed? <laughs> Am I going to have to land this plane more than once? <laughs> <laughs> wow, you sure got a lot going on up there, don't you? You have no idea. <laughs> Jesus, Manny, this is what a pulse feels like. When you feel this, it means someone's alive. The guy was dead. He was gone. Nothing like this can ever happen again. Assisted suicide is supposed to end suffering, not create more. I just don't understand how this happened. Are you crying? I gave him more than enough pento to kill him. The drinks are the problem. The drinks have worked every other time, flawlessly. If we had used an injection, Troy would not have come back from the dead. You know it, and I know it. We've been through this. It has to be their doing. I know you have your issues with injections, but that's why I'm volunteering to do them. I want to. Sometimes, I don't know whether you're a compassionate doctor or a serial killer. Oh my god. Said the girl that just smothered a guy with a pillow. Hey! You know, it's okay. Um, you did what you had to do under the circumstance. It's just that all I'm saying is there wouldn't have been a circumstance if we had used an injection. If we pull the trigger, we're killers. If they do, we're something else. But the law doesn't care about that distinction. We're killers, injection or not. Prove you can take a pulse. Then we'll talk injections. Control freak. Serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so who's our next hit? We're not hitmen. We're helpers. Wow, you sure do put the youth in euthanasia. <laughs> <laughs> Is that antifreeze? On um, bologna? <laughs> Is our meat overheating again? See these bite marks right here on this cucumber? Dad thinks we have a possum problem again. So you're going to poison it with antifreeze? On bologna? Sebastian, this is a living creature we were talking about. So was the steak and two racks of ribs you ate last Saturday. Oh. Thanks for that update, Jenny Craig. <laughs> no, what we need to do is we need to take it and release it humanely. See, I like that idea, but Father's Garden has won awards. I think we should trust his advice. See, this is the problem. You need to stop taking advice from Dad and start taking it from me, your sister. You see, Dad advised me not to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't believe you would do that to Bruce. Bruce? Who the heck is Bruce? <laughs> oh, he's the possum. I just named him. I see what you're doing here. You think that by giving Miss Bruce a name, 
I'm just going to give a whole backstory to him in my head. That's crazy. Probably this guy, a teenager, born from a loveless one-night stand. Now he's out on the streets, <laughs> working nights, trying to provide for food for his 13 brothers and sisters, none of whom can read. <sighs> Fine, we'll do it your way. Wow, what a great suggestion! That you thought of all on your own. No wonder why Dad wants you to host Sunday supper. I know. I can't believe this is actually happening. Sunday supper is just Dad forcing us, taking us hostage, and making us listen to his stupid, vaguely racist remarks. Don't you understand? This is the traditional handover. He's giving me the keys. You're looking at the new silverback of the family. And as a silverback sister, maybe you and Dad were finally listening to my advice? Okay, let's not go too crazy about that. <laughs> you can't use the sauce. The sauce. You can't make the sauce using skim milk as a substitute. Oh my god, nothing tastes better than not having to go to spin class for the next six days. You can't, you can't set a time limit on a meal. Okay, the only way that a dinner should last five hours is if you're on your way to the electric chair. <laughs> God, the music, it's just... <clears throat> Sunday dinner, you can't not play Sinatra. So you're telling me that you would rather listen to Sinatra than to my music? Yeah, basically. Come on. It's okay to dance to my music, Sebastian. But I don't like dancing! That's a lie. Are you right on it? <laughs> What's wrong? It's Dad. Oh God, he's dancing. Oh, I'm doing things with his hips. Oh, oh I, I never, never want to see. see. <laughs> oh. Oh. always many. I'm glad you like it. You know, if I decide to take you back, I'll have to cut you pay five dollars a week. Take me back? What do you put in here that makes it taste so good? Mm. That good vanilla from Mexico is something else real special. Mm. No, 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 Mrs. Walters. This Miss Hilly's special cake. Um, we can have some cake. Cut her one. Eat my shit. What did you say? I said, eat my shit. Shit. Have you lost your mind? No, ma'am. You just lost yours. Because you just did. <laughs> <laughs> send you to jail for what you wrote, but I can send you for being a thief. I know something about you. Don't you forget that. And from what Yuli May says, I have enough time to write in jail. Enough time to write the truth about you. And the paper is free. Nobody will believe what you wrote. I don't know. I've been told I'm a pretty good writer. Sold a lot of books, too. Mama? Call the police. 
All you do is lie to get what you want. Minnie, stop. You a godless woman. Ain't you tired, Miss Hilly? Ain't you tired of lying? Sarah, stop with the pickles. Come on, what's the favor? Favor! Right. Okay, let's see how I can put this. It's delicate. Uh, Coco. I need your uterus. <laughs> what? I mean, you can keep it in your... There. Where it belongs. I just... What the hell are you talking about? Well, as you know, I've always wanted a family, and I think that right now is the right time for me to have a family. <laughs> so, you knew that, right? No, I didn't know that. Yeah, you did. You knew I wanted How would I know that? <laughs> what do you mean, how would you know that? I always said that. To who? To whoever I was talking to. And when was whoever you were talking to me? <laughs> Anyways, I've always wanted a family, and I think that right now is the perfect time for me to have that family that I've always wanted. So, I would like you to have my baby for me. I did not see this coming. <laughs> I would pay you, of course. What the heck? It would be like a job. At that time, you sold lemonade to the neighbors. I know what a job is, Sarah. <laughs> right. Sorry. Anyways, it would be my egg that gets fertilized, so you can keep yours, and the sperm would come from a donor to be named later. Now, the one condition I would have to impose is that you would have to stay at my house for the length of the pregnancy. <laughs> but, but, a beautiful guest room, and a big walk-in closet, and a nice bathroom, you actually might enjoy it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did you just say I might actually enjoy this? There's maid service. <laughs> enjoy being knocked up with your baby? Like an incubator? An incubator with TiVo? <laughs> I'll get pregnant. Pregnant. As in a living being will be growing inside me. Well, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking that it will be like Alien, our favorite movie. But you're wrong. It will have a different exit strategy. <laughs> get. I'll get all the morning sickness. I'll get. I'll get fat. I'll have to go through all the pain and suffering. And I don't even get to get laid first. Uh, I have cucumbers. <laughs> we'll make pickles. <laughs> no. Coco, this is not so crazy. It's done all the time. Not by me, it's not. Coco, just think about it. You have pickles, right? <laughs> <laughs>
Cheryl. We need to talk. You can't just walk into my house. Like, it's not like we were living back at home. Turn around and get out. Calm down, Cheryl. I'm only talking to you because we have the same mother. Why? What is wrong with Mom? You know, I think it's sick that you have to ask that. <laughs> Danny, I don't live in the same town as you and Mom. So yes, of course you know more about her than I do. Well, I'm glad that you know that. If you have something to say, then say it. Mom's sick. With what? For how long? Cancer. She got diagnosed five months ago. What? There's no way. No one told me. She would have told me. She would have told me. You were busy, okay? You started a new life. You got a new town, new friends, new school, new everything. She didn't want to worry you. She told you not to tell me? Well, yeah, and honestly, I didn't care enough, to be honest. It's not like we talk anymore, jeez. Danny, you do not wait five months to tell me mom is sick. I don't care what she says. Cheryl, this is not something you just discuss over the phone. Yes, it is! If she has cancer, it is. Hey, I'm sorry. How bad is it? It's in her stomach lining. Um, she doesn't have any hair. She's thin. She won't swallow any food. What did the doctor say? Nothing good. So what? She's gonna die or something? She could. But I got her into a trial. What is that? Like an experiment? I, I guess. They told me it was a good one, though. Did they say it could save her? Cheryl, they don't know. Then what do you want from me? Clearly you didn't bother to come all the way down here if you didn't need something. Mom doesn't want to do it. Why not? She's afraid it'll work. That she will be alive but not living. The machines will be doing that for her. Is she right? Could that happen? Oh my god, does it matter? We have a chance to save mom. I need you to talk her into No! This. No! No, I... I can't do that. Why not? What do you mean, why not? Just do it, please. I don't want her to just live. Danny, I want her to be alive. You know what? At least she'd still be with us. Would she? Did you hear a shot fired? No. I was in the shower. So the 20 minutes you were in the shower, your father was shot? I guess. Your father was shot while you were in the shower? Yes. I was washing my hair. Miss Wyndham, can you explain to us what happened during the day? I got up. Went to Starbucks, went to the gym, got a perm, and went back home. Where you got in the shower? Yes! I already said that. Miss Wyndham, have you ever gotten a perm before? Yes. About how many would you say? Um, to what year since uh, I was 12? You do the math. You know, a girl in my sorority, Tracy Marcinko, got a perm once. We all tried to talk her out of it. Curls really weren't a good look for her. She didn't have your bone structure. <laughs> but thankfully, she entered the Pi Kappa Wet T-shirt contest, where she was completely soaked from head to toe. Uh, uh, why is this important? Chutney, 
Can you explain why Tracy Marcinko's curls were completely ruined? Uh, because they got wet. That's right. Because isn't it the first cardinal rule of perm maintenance that you are forbidden to wet your hair for at least 24 hours after getting a perm at the risk of deactivating the ammonium thygloculate? Yes. <laughs> and wouldn't someone who's had, say, 30 perms in their lifetime be well aware of this rule? And if you were, in fact, not washing your hair, as I suspect you were not since your curls are still intact, wouldn't you have heard the gunshot? And if you had, in fact, not heard the gunshot, then Brooke Wyndham wouldn't have had time to hide the gun, which means you would have to find her downstairs with the gun in her hand in order to make your story sound plausible. Isn't that right? She's younger than me. Did she tell you that? How will you feel if your father was married to someone younger than you? You, however, Chutney, had time to hide the gun, didn't you? After you shot your father! I didn't mean to shoot him! I mean to shoot you! It's not appropriate. None of this is fucking appropriate. My husband did not murder that man. That'll be for a jury to decide. That's bullshit. You're the government's lead prosecutor. You can change this. You could do the right thing for another black man who doesn't deserve any of this. It's a complicated situation. As a black man, I cannot make it appear as if I'm not pursuing this case because of race. Why are you pursuing this? Out of all of the murders in this country by police? And this is the case the government is investigating? Not only Black Lives Matter. Clearly. Please. Please. Please let this one go. Please. I'm sorry. I think there's enough evidence to indict. What? That's bullshit. There's no videos. There's no witnesses. But you know damn well if you put him in front of a grand jury, that won't matter. Let's He's black and that's enough. Let me do my job. His anger is your only evidence. You don't know what evidence I have. I know you love your husband. And you don't want this for him. But I'm not here to make you happy. Don't take this out on him, Preston. Whatever passed between us, it's... It's my fault. But not his. Don't flatter yourself. I'm not after revenge. Then prove it. Stop the indictment. Wow. What did I ever do? To make me seem the shallow to you? He's a good man, Preston. He's a father, a great father, and he's my husband. Maybe you should reconsider your ability to be a good judge of character. You know what it's like to be set up. He just wanted respect. He thought a badge would give him that. But those bastards in that department make his life a living hell, and they do it with a smile on their face and a pat on his back. You should go. You know, what kind of fucking brother are you? Your husband knew about the tours. Did he ever tell you that? What? Yeah. Uh, that's, that, that's impossible. Those same bastards were hunting black people, and your husband said nothing about it. They're bad cops, yeah. And then there are those who stay on the sidelines letting it happen. Now, there is evidence that Joey Campbell did not reach for your husband's gun. So either he is a racist cop who shot an unarmed white boy, or he's covering for the ones who did. 
Now, I don't know if your husband is guilty or not, but I know for damn sure he's not innocent. I've seen a real increase in uh, illegalities in construction permits, specifically scaffolding. I call it a crime wave, actually. That's, uh, real interesting. So, hey, Alan, how come you've never fired your weapon in the office? Who fires their weapon in the office? We all have. That seems a little dangerous and maybe against the rules. <laughs> rules? Dangerous? We're cops. The gun's a tool of our trade. I mean, it's okay to use your tool, isn't it? We're in a uh, professional environment. Mm -hmm. Come on. <laughs> Do you really think we'd lie to you about finding your weapon in the office? It's called a desk pop. It's a common tradition in the force. Really? Yes, really. Now take your gun out. Well, pop one off, buddy. I don't know. This feels wrong. Wrong? We're cops. This is what we do. There's no safer place in the world to fire off around than in the station. <laughs> wow. I'm kind of getting excited. I'm going to do it. Wait, no, let me ask the lieutenant first. No, no, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. All right, all right. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, up or down? Down. Up. Oh. Boy, I don't know, nice. guys. <laughs> You're overthinking it. Just do it. It's okay. It's okay. Desk pop. First ever desk pop. Oh, what the hell are you doing? I mean, it's my first desk pop. That's a real thing, uh, right? No. Right? No, it's not a real thing. A desk pop. Are you fucking crazy? <laughs> Martin. What? What about a cop? <laughs> Where am I? Ta da! Harley Quinn. <laughs> Mr. J will be so glad to see you. Wait, you? And the Joker? Right, Rooney? <laughs> except for himself. You don't know anything. He had you pay for a higher help the minute you walked in. No, 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 no. That's, that's not true, okay? That is not true. He told me things, secrets, secrets, secrets he never told anyone. <laughs> Ooh, like what? His alcoholic father? <laughs> yep. How about his abusive mother too? <laughs> yeah, that's right. What about, hmm, oh, the orphan story. That's pretty moving. Good stop it, you're making me confused! <laughs> oh, yes, I remember. <clears throat> there was this one time I ever saw my dad happy. He took me to the... Circus. He said it was a circus. He's got a million of them. No, you hurried in. You, you eavesdropped. You, you knew our conversation. Somehow you knew. Somehow you did this. You were the one ruining this. You were the one getting out of everyone's way. You were the one stating me from happiness. I love him. He loves me. And he, the only way that this will ever stop is if you go away. <laughs> go ahead. Kill me. He'll hate you forever. 
Queen. Don't you get it? He wants to kill me. You know his ego. No, no. My Putin, he loves me. He loves me, okay? He'll be happy that I'm doing him such a big favor. Poor, sweet, naive Harley Quinn. <laughs> He'll really hate you after you kill me. Why? Why? Don't you remember the time you almost killed Batman? No, no, no. You see that? That was different, okay? Batman's been after him for years, okay? He wanted this. He planned it. He, I, I, I got in the way. It was my fault. I should have been, I should, I should have been more careful. <laughs> how long? How long has he been playing for my death? You're right. I know. I'll call him. And I'll wrap you up just like a present. Wait! Are you sure that's a good idea? Why? You'll be insulting him. The situation is too easy. Like a fish in a barrel. Fish in a what? Never mind the point. <laughs> the, the thing is that it's making a challenge for him. You know how he is. The Joker? He's your pudding. He'll love it. You're right, what do I do? Untie me, and it will be such a good challenge for him. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Smarty pants. Oh my god, I should have listened to you from the first place. I don't know what I was thinking. You know, if we didn't hate each other so much, we could totally be best friends. That is so true. I know. I have so many clever ideas. <gasps> I've never had a friend before. Oh, come here, sweet Mia. <laughs> find my cute underwear <laughs> and my fake ID. <laughs> Wait, Claire, I can't. I forgot we moved back to my parents' house in Texas. Right, and it was a bad idea, so let's go before they notice. <laughs> oh God, I can see a football field from my window. You're thinking of staying here? Teens our age are grandparents in Texas. Well, yeah, but my parents asked me to move back, you know, to help the family store. You're not coming back to the Big Apple with me because of that? Hey, last time I was there, I had a rat trapped under a salad bowl. <laughs> so this sounds like a pretty good option. Oh, great. It's Tornado Siren! <laughs> yeah, well, this is Texas welcoming me home. <laughs> Beck, get your shoes and your coat and let's go. There's a tornado! Why? My life's a bust. I failed as a fashion designer. I failed at love. I'm right back to where I was whenever I was a little kid. You know, except my diary has more swear words. <laughs> Can we have this pity party later? A cautious flew past your window. <laughs> of course, you have no compassion because your life's a fairy tale. I scrub toilets at Taco Bell. <laughs> okay, but you didn't even suffer a broken nail. Okay, and so instead of that, you come back with tacos and hot sauce, and our, our roommates practically throw you a parade. Okay, and then you meet your boyfriend, the mayor's son, no less, and then bam, you're dating the hottest guy in town. Not, a, not if I die in a tornado. But now let's go before we die. You know I can't wear these together. I'll look fat. Yeah, there's the back I know. <laughs> hey, hey, wait a second. Why aren't you outside? What the hell's going on? I can't. I can't do this. What do you mean you can't do it? You can't do what? I can't give Nikki your letter. 
Tiffany, what are you talking about? What do you mean you can't give the letter to Nikki? Because what are you doing for me? You said, okay, you said, if I wrote a letter, you would get it to Nikki. I know. And that was the setup. Because I do this all the shit to other people. And then I wake up and I'm empty. I have nothing. And I'm not my sister, okay? Well, look, Tiffany, what can I do for you? Come on, think of something. There's this thing. There's a thing. Okay. <laughs> what kind of thing? It's a thing. It's a thing. It's it's a dance thing. It's a dance thing. Right. <laughs> it's a competition thing at Benjamin Franklin Hotel. Tommy will never do it with me, and I miss it every single year. Yeah, well, Tommy's dead, so he's not going to Will you me. please? All right. I don't have a filter when I talk. I'm Can sorry. we have one single conversation without you reminding me that my goddamn yes. husband yes. is dead? Yes. Yes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My God. Okay? I'm sorry. <laughs> but I'm about to miss it for another year, and I need a partner. <laughs> Whoa. I'm not gonna fucking dance with you. What are you talking about? What? Is your schedule so busy? Rapes of Brad and watching football with your dad? Tiffany, I'm not gonna do a dance with you. Okay, then I'm not gonna give Nikki your fucking letter. <laughs> Wait a second. But you said you would do it. Think about it. You know, I already did something for you. What? What did you do for me? I took care of that jerk off in your front yard. Who? Jordy? Yeah, and let me ask you something. You call him when you get lonely? You know, that encourages him, Tiffany. You shouldn't do it. Ah. Couldn't you say the same thing about you and Nikki? Oh, it is not at all like me and Nikki. What are you talking about? We're in love and we're married. It's completely different. How are you in love? Tell me about it. This big Nikki love. Tell me about it. I want to understand it. All right. We have a very unconventional chemistry. It makes people feel awkward, but not me. She is the most beautiful woman I have ever been with. Well. All right, it is electric between us, okay? I mean, sure, we want to change each other, but that's what couples do, it's normal. <laughs> she wants me to, I mean, I want her to stop dressing the way she dresses. I want her to stop acting so superior to me. She wanted me to lose weight and stop my mood swings, both of which I've done. I mean, look, people fight, couples fight. We would fight, we wouldn't talk for a couple weeks, that is normal, all right? She is always one of the best for me. She wanted me to be passionate and compassionate. And I mean, that is a good thing. And I just, look, I'm my best self today. And I think she's her best self today too. And our love, it's gonna be fucking amazing. Okay, it's gonna be amazing and you're gonna be amazing and she's gonna be amazing. And you are not gonna be the type of guy that gets away with that situation without offering me something back. So think about the dance thing. Fuck! <laughs> It's nice that your mom bought us all that food and the first month's rent. <laughs> I can't believe she didn't let me keep the living room furniture. <laughs> Thank God my old bedroom had its own couch. Yeah, how are we going to find chairs to match it? I'm not good with that kind of thing. Like, how'd you pick this couch? Well, I narrowed it down to four to five options. My mom hated one, and that's the one I went with. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but why wouldn't you just pick the one you liked best? Because. I didn't know I liked it until she said she hated it. <laughs> I based most of my decisions. <laughs> okay, I think the first thing we need is a big TV. Right here, in the living room. No! My mom will see it. I want her to tell me how I spend so much money. 
Okay, well, I mean, I can hide it in my room instead. <laughs> With the help of this new calculator, which I have taken from its adorably monogrammed leather carrying case with diamond inlays, I am putting us on a budget, Cass. Okay, but you do realize that budgets require tough decisions. And ones I'm willing to make. I have a list over here of things I'm willing to cross out. <laughs> for instance, the sewing machine you want for your cosplay outfit, gone. Wait, what? <laughs> Anime channel on DirecTV? Out of here. <laughs> wow. Feels so liberty liberating once you start crossing things off the list. Okay, okay, hold on. These are just my things. Cass, we're roommates. It's not yours or mine. It's ours. Our subscription to Seamstress Illustrated. See you later. Okay, you're being ridiculous. There are plenty of things that you buy unnecessarily. Okay, you're right. If we both want to be serious, we have to both make sacrifices. You name it, and if it's unnecessary, it's gone. Okay, then. Let's see. Weekly facials. No! <laughs> I need them! Next. Alright, how about the mani petties? Absolutely necessary. Are you trying not to take this seriously? Okay, fine. New clothes. You go shopping all the time. Because it soothes me, Cass. Do I tell you to stop jogging? Besides, <laughs> I saved over a thousand dollars last week alone. That jacket over there, 25% off. What? Wait, how much did it cost originally? Cass, if it didn't cost a lot, I would have saved a lot. <laughs> think. Okay, you know what? This is not productive at all. Yeah, you're right. It's not productive because you're not crossing anything off the list. And now I'm feeling stressed and judged. A self-sufficient adult, I'm walking away. When you are ready to discuss this in a mature manner, you can find me. I'm ready to drive. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 